Well, hey guys, I'm here at Walgreens to check out the antioxidant skincare. We're going to talk all things antioxidants in today's video. Possible benefits for anti-aging, wrinkles, fine lines, dark spots, all of that good stuff. What exactly is an antioxidant anyway? Antioxidants are substances that combine to neutralize reactive oxygen species, preventing damage to proteins, DNA, lipids in your skin that would otherwise end up leading to premature skin aging. Your skin is exposed to a lot of environmental stressors throughout the day, UV rays from the sun, visible light from the sun, heat, infrared radiation, pollution, tobacco smoke. If you drink excessive amounts of alcohol, all of these things can generate a lot of reactive oxygen species that can overwhelm your skin's ability to neutralize them and create a scenario of oxidative stress, but it's not as straightforward as reactive oxygen species are bad and antioxidants are good. It's a lot more nuanced than that. Reactive oxygen species are a natural part of your skin cell biology. They're constantly being made and to a certain extent your body is able to handle them, your skin is able to handle them, and enough of them is actually a good thing because it helps your body be more resilient, your skin be more resilient to day-to-day -day stressors. It's all about balance. With age, our antioxidant systems in our skin, they do start to decline when we go out and we're exposed to environmental stressors, namely UV rays from the sun. They actually can deplete the antioxidant systems in our skin and tip us over the edge. So the whole concept of putting antioxidants in skincare is to balance out those excesses and the depletion of our own antioxidant systems and maybe help reduce damage to our skin from free radicals aka reactive oxygen species. We have a lot of antioxidants and skincare at our disposal, so we can be very particular. This is new from Olay, the Super Serum, and it has one of my favorite antioxidants, niacinamide. Not only is it an antioxidant, but it's anti-inflammatory, and it does a lot of other things in the skin that can yield benefit. It can help reduce redness. It can help lighten dark spots because it helps to reduce the transfer of pigment packets from the pigment-producing cells melanocytes to neighboring keratinocytes. It also helps with the lipids in the top layer of the skin, helping with the moisture barrier. It reduces oxidation of lipids that would otherwise lead to an inflammatory cascade. And for those of you who have acne, it can help slow down the oxidation of sebum and maybe help with acne breakouts. This has a few other antioxidants in it though. It has 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid, vitamin C, or a stabilized derivative of vitamin C. Now ascorbic acid, uh, has been shown actually to help with lightening hyperpigmentation and it also has been shown to help improve collagen production and reduce oxidative stress upon exposure to UV rays. However, the devil is in the details when it comes to not only the ingredient, but the formulation overall. So in this case, we're getting 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid. That's a stable derivative. Um, which is important because ascorbic acid by itself, it's not very stable, it degrades easily, and its penetration in the skin is limited. Now, 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid, it may be stable, it may get into your skin, but whether or not it's biologically active, eh, who knows? At any rate, it may help with uh, reducing oxidative stress. This also has tocopherol acetate. It's another antioxidant that may help with reducing peroxidation of lipids. So one of the main questions that remains to be determined when it comes to putting antioxidants in your on your skin is not only which one and what's the best dosage, formulation, etc., but when should you put them on? We don't have good research on dosing and timing of applying antioxidants. There's some research with certain antioxidants showing benefit when applied before UV exposure as well as after UV exposure. Um, yeah, so Olay has a night serum here with niacinamide. So whether or not you should put niacinamide on in the morning or in the evening, um, to be determined, it's not really well established, but uh, as, it, as, it's, as it would stand, it doesn't, provided you tolerate it, it, it doesn't seem to be harmful to use that twice a day. But whether or not you get uh, better effects putting it on at night or in the morning, we really don't know. And that's important because it's not merely slapping these bad boys on your skin, but it has to, they have to be there when they're needed. All right, so this is new from Rock, and I'm kind of intrigued. It is a dual eye cream. Eyelid skin's very delicate, so the collagen and things are more susceptible to damage from environmental exposures, namely the sun, but also pollution. And then of course, if you smoke, um, certain lifestyles are gonna be more inflammatory, if you will, drinking alcohol in excess, smoking. Reactive oxygen species is just an umbrella term for um, 
derivatives of molecular oxygen and they are a type of free radical which basically can attack things um, like proteins lipids and dna in your skin skin cells tissues and lead to damage so here we have tocopherol acetate that's um, vitamin e now that may help your skin out to a certain extent. It may help improve the levels of vitamin C in your skin. It often exhibits um, synergy with vitamin C. But in this product, it may also help in stabilizing retinol, which is an ingredient that can get in and convert to retinoic acid, which binds to receptors in the skin to change skin cell biology and behavior for the better and help improve collagen production in the deeper layers of the skin. Um, one of the advantages of using retinol, when, once it gets converted to retinoic acid or using prescription retinoic acid, tretinoin, is that in addition to improving collagen, it also can help suppress upregulation of enzymes that chew up collagen when you are exposed to UV. That's one of the downsides of um, unprotected sun exposure is that not only does it destroy the DNA in the skin cells, but it also upregulates enzymes that chew up collagen. Uh, retinoic acid can suppress that. So that coupled with the vitamin E. Now this is a new sunscreen from Rock SPF 30. It appears to be an organic sunscreen. So antioxidants, they may help in reducing the burden of damage from UV, but they're not going to block it. There's always this enthusiasm for putting antioxidants in sunscreen, but whether or not they actually penetrate the skin in a sunscreen is debatable because sunscreen is intended to form a film on the skin surface. There's a paper out there that shows that antioxidants and sunscreens don't get into the skin, but again, it's probably dependent on the formula overall and the particular antioxidant. But other papers advocate and suggest the benefit of antioxidants in sunscreens, especially for like correcting hyperpigmentation by lessening the burden of oxidative stress from like visible light and pollution and all of those types of things. Um, this particular um, sunscreen, it does have um, 3 o ethyl ascorbic acid, which again is not the same as ascorbic acid, but. And then their eye balm, cooling and hydrating eye balm. This one has tetrahexyl desyl ascorbate. That's a stable form of vitamin C that um, may get into the skin just fine, but whether or not your skin converts it to ascorbic acid seems unlikely. I'm kind of surprised this doesn't have caffeine, like most eye balms and things of that sort. Caffeine is also an antioxidant that can help uh, temporarily improve the look of dark under eye circles. Now most people are pursuing antioxidants and skincare for their face, but don't forget your hands. Hands see a lot of environmental stress and like the skin on the backs of our hands is much thinner than like, you know, your cheeks and it sees a lot of sun. This is one of the first places where skin aging shows up and sun damage. So not only protecting your skin from the sun, but always moisturizing the skin of the hands. And niacinamide is the antioxidant here. It may help, again, in helping with the skin barrier, but also in combating some of those stressors, like from exposure to detergents and things with hand washing. Cumulatively, all the things that you touch throughout the day, they do put a lot of uh, stress on your skin, your skin barrier. And that may be a good thing. You know, like I said, a little bit of stress is good because it, it helps your skin skin become more resistant it activates adaptive responses but you know when you're outside sun exposure it kind of overwhelms all the systems so maybe having an antioxidant on board is a good thing but again this is an area of, of research where we really need more more clinical studies because uh, there's just a gap in knowledge regarding timing dosage and to what extent and what particular pathways any given antioxidant in a product is is truly beneficial. And a lot of antioxidants like niacinamide, they have dual roles. They do multiple things. Um, maybe they inhibit tyrosinase, which is the enzyme responsible for pigment production, um, as is the case with vitamin C. That's, that's how it works. Or niacinamide works uh, for hyperpigmentation by slowing down transfer of pigment packets around. Neither of those are antioxidant effects, but it, it, it still has skin benefit above and beyond reducing free radicals. This um, antioxidant protection, antioxidant defense serum from Aven, it has ascorbyl glu glucoside, a stable form of vitamin C and pre tocopheryl You know, ascorbyl glucoside, it, it can get in and everything. Uh, may help reduce free radicals. But most of the research is on ascorbic acid, not ascorbyl glucoside. So you may just be having, you know, the vitamin E in there. And if you're really interested in, in uh, antioxidants, it's like question mark, is that really, 
Is that really where it's at or am I just getting another moisturizer? What does this one have? Sodium hyaluronate, that's a hyaluronic acid salt. This looks similar only in a water cream formula. Here we have the Nivea Skin Firming Hydration with Q10 Ubiquinone. Ubiquinone is a lipid soluble uh, antioxidant that is naturally present in your skin. There's some evidence that applying it to the skin may help in boosting up your skin's own antioxidant systems and reducing oxidative stress. These ingredients, antioxidants, a lot of a lot of it has to just be a a faith effort. Like you're not actually going to know if they're getting in and um, neutralizing free radicals to reduce damage to your skin. You kind of just have to believe that they are and with time maybe there will be a difference. Uh, like I said, they often have multiple um, other effects. Now I see they're out of this new L'Oreal 12% Niacinamide Serum, but it looks like it has Ferulic acid, which is also an antioxidant. This is new from Walgreens brand, the Daily Repair Psoriasis Moisturizer with 3% salicylic acid. There's some interest for topical antioxidants in psoriasis. It's a chronic inflammatory skin condition, um, and that inflammation generates oxidative stress that may overwhelm the antioxidant systems in the skin. Now, the salicylic acid in this is going to help soften and exfoliate the um, excessive scale on the top of the skin. I'm kind of intrigued by this. So this has olive fruit oil in it, which may have antioxidants in it. So I was talking about vitamin C earlier in terms of antioxidants. This product actually has ascorbic acid in it. Now, um, you always have to, you know, question ascorbic acid because it's not stable. Um, so manufacturers have to do stuff to stabilize it. Things like adding uh, ferulic acid and or vitamin E can help. Also the packaging helps. And then there's the issue with penetration. It has to be the right pH and the right concentration. Um, but this is actually a pretty good drugstore option. I, I've reviewed it long ago, but it also has ceramides, which are helpful for the moisture barrier. Now the ascorbic acid in this may actually be helpful um, for hyperpigmentation simply because it helps to inhibit tyrosinase. That plus niacinamide, which works differently for hyperpigmentation, is potentially a nice combination. If, if you find another product with niacinamide, which CeraVe has, puts niacinamide in their, um, in their facial moisturizer, the, the AM and the PM have niacinamide, yeah. So, you know, that combination together may be really helpful for dark spots. And then of course the daytime one, this is the Walgreens version, has niacinamide and then it also has the sunscreen in it to protect you from UV rays, which would deplete your skin's antioxidant system. Especially if you're outside in the sun, drinking alcohol, which further depletes the antioxidants in your skin, leaves you more vulnerable to damage. Here's another really good product with Ubiquinone Q10, this Eucerin Q10 Anti-Wrinkle Face Cream. It's just a nice facial moisturizer you could use at nighttime. It also has sodium ascorbyl phosphate. That's a stable form of vitamin C that, again, whether or not it gets in and is converted to ascorbic acid to go on to improve collagen remains to be determined, but there is some evidence that it may actually be helpful for acne. So that's a great facial moisturizer, underrated, and then there this is a sunscreen, I don't believe it has Q10, but as a side note, it is very good. Now, plant oils are a source of antioxidants as well. However, the antioxidant quantity, quality, constitution is highly variable. Of course, from oil to oil, batch to batch, manufacturer to manufacturer, there's so much variability. But this particular product from Neutrogena, as a side note, I really enjoy. If you have flaky skin, it's a great way to exfoliate. This is a great way to exfoliate, actually, because it slips between shedding flaky cells and it deposits behind the oil to soften and smooth, and then you may have a little delivery of antioxidant that can help with healing and recovery. What about taking antioxidants like vitamin C? Um, whether or not that ends up helping your skin out, it seems unlikely. And there is harm in taking high doses of supplemental antioxidants. Um, so not only has it been shown to not be helpful, but it's been shown to actually be harmful depending on the antioxidant. Like for example, beta carotene has been shown to increase the risk of cancers. Vitamin E, for example, has been shown to increase bleeding. 
um, as well as certain uh, cancers, lung cancer namely. I was really hoping to find a product here that has melatonin because that is a topical antioxidant that shows a lot of promise for helping to mitigate um, oxidative stress and reduce damage to the skin from environmental stressors that overwhelm our skin systems. But I'm not finding a melatonin product here. However, recently I did a video on the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty event, which is going on now. Check that video out if you missed it. In that video, I said, hey, there's this Beekman product with melatonin I'm dying to get my hands on. I don't know what was going on. Ulta would not let me buy it. They kept, I kept getting a timeout message when I was trying to check out and then they were like, that's it, it's gone, you can't buy it. So I didn't get it. <laughs> Anyway, let me know if you guys had that experience shopping the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale or maybe you just get up really early and shop it and I was just too late. I would say in the drugstore, the majority of products that you're going to come across, even if they're advertising antioxidants or not, they're going to have niacinamide, they're going to have a stabilized derivative of vitamin C maybe, whether it be ascorbyl glucoside or sodium ascorbyl phosphate or 3-O-ethyl ascorbate, or they're going, and or they're going to have vitamin E. Um, some form of vitamin E. And so those are antioxidants. Depending on the formula though, they may or may not be doing anything for you. But I would say of all of those ingredients we just talked about, niacinamide is the one that most reliably yields some sort of skin benefit provided you tolerate it. I'm currently wearing this on my face right now. It's a really good um, sunscreen with antioxidants in it, by the way. Now again, whether or not the antioxidants are getting into the skin and doing anything, we still don't know. I mean, we don't know. Like, Banana Boat is not required to show that. There's no really, honestly, there isn't even a great test um, to demonstrate that. But I I really like this. And it's currently on sale, originally $14.49, but you can get it here at Walgreens for $12.49. Although I think on Amazon, I want to say it's roughly that, or maybe Target. Anyway, this is really good. It has um, niacinamide and it has uh, vitamin C. They also make it in a bigger bottle with fragrance. This SPF 50 and then this SPF 30 also has fragrance, but the one I'm using just says face, no fragrance. Here's a ingredient that can offer a lot, including antioxidants, and that is colloidal oatmeal. This is so versatile, albeit messy in the bathtub, but basically it helps with improving the moisture content in the skin. It helps reduce the penetration of irritants into the skin by acting as a skin protectant. And it's packed with antioxidants like avananthramides that help with barrier recovery and oxidative stress. This is a great um, underrated product in my opinion uh, because while it's typically thought of as a bath soak, you can just put a little bit in some water and do a compress. You could even use those sheet masks if you wanted to, those paper sheet masks you can buy and soak in your own, in your own serums or whatever. You could do that with uh, colloidal oatmeal. I have a video explaining that. If you have dry, irritated skin on the face and you just want a soothing facial mask, then you also may get some antioxidants from the oats. This Shea Moisture Daily Hydration Face Lotion with coconut milk has green tea extract in it. Now, green tea polyphenols have also been shown to reduce the um, burden of damage to the skin from oxidative stress upon exposure to sunlight. Green tea polyphenols, they have four different catechins. The main one is EGCG. Speaking of colloidal oatmeal though, you know, it's frequently found in skincare products, but uh, dance on over to the baby section. Walgreens has their baby um, eczema version of Aveeno eczema therapy. The Aveeno one at least is really good. This is great if you've got sensitive, irritated skin and everything um, burns and stings. Try a colloidal oatmeal based moisturizer. They tend to be very soothing, anti-inflammatory, helpful for the skin barrier, barrier recovery. But like I was saying, when it comes to free radicals, don't just put free radicals in the all bad bin, like anything that creates reactive oxygen species must be bad because that is not the way to look at it. It's all about the balance. So for example, somebody can pull up a study showing that DHA and sunless tanner uh, in vitro, there's reactive oxygen species generated, and they may try and convince you that that means that like sunless tanners are going to age your skin, and that could not be further from the truth. I mean, we have no evidence that that happens, um, and if anything, sunless tanners have been shown to offer some protection against visible light, which generates a lot of free radicals. So it's not merely the presence of free radicals being generated equals rapid aging. 
Like recently I came across a TikTok where a gal was claiming that she found a paper showing that nanoparticles and sunscreen caused free radicals and she was trying to tell everybody that that meant that their sunscreens with nanoparticles were going to age them more quickly and it's like no girl you you, you don't understand the, the simply reactive oxygen species it doesn't necessarily mean bad because again um, your skin can handle it not to mention nanoparticles and sunscreen are coated to reduce that from happening um, but yeah, um, benzoyl peroxide, for example, is another one that people falsely equate as having a pro-aging effect, even though it's been used for decades with no evidence that it has a pro-aging effect. People just say, oh, creates creates reactive oxygen species, because that's how it works to, to target the acne-causing bacteria. Reactive oxygen species, that's a good thing. It doesn't mean it's going to overwhelm the system and start damaging collagen for it left and right. Speaking of niacinamide, this is a new product from Gillette, this pre-shave. Sea salt, ow, <laughs> niacinamide, which again is good for the moisture barrier, and panthenol is also good for the moisture barrier. I wonder if the sea salt is dissolved in this and is just there for formulation, like you know, salts are added to skincare products, or if it's like chunky and gritty. I imagine it's just there for marketing. Algae extract is hydrating, but maybe this has some scrub particles in it, which can be irritating for some people, but just the act of massaging on moisturizer or an oil helps to exfoliate shedding skin cells. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. That's everything I wanted to share with you all about antioxidants in this video. But if you like these Shop With Me videos on the end slate, I'm going to put my last drugstore Shop With Me video where I went through the drugstore and talked about the best skincare in the drugstore for mature skin. So you're not gonna wanna miss that one. Lots of helpful tips in that video. But if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.